Open up your Bibles. Luke chapter 19. God is good. Luke chapter 19. Verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed, quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He had gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if, if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. I know I said I had notes, but I'm not going to preach with notes today. I think the evangelist needs to come out today, not the pastor. Hallelujah. Here Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner. You know you're famous when the Bible recognizes you as a notorious sinner. You know, I mean, I might have done some things bad, but I'm not notorious for being a sinner. Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner. And they began to judge Jesus because of another man's sin. And here Jesus was. He saw this man in a tree. And he knew his name by the Holy Ghost. He didn't say, what's that guy's name? No, he said, that little man right there. Zacchaeus. I'm going to your house. And so he went to his house and just the very presence of Jesus in the house began to change everything about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, who is known to be a notorious sinner, no longer was seeing himself as wanting to live that life again. Matter of fact, he began to make a vow and began to make a heartfelt change right then and there. I'm going to do what's right before man and before God. I'm going to, I'm going to repay and make a, a restitution to anybody I, I have deceived and I have stolen from. I'm going, to, I'm going to be a man of integrity and honor because Jesus is in my house. Jesus didn't talk to him and tell him, listen, what you're doing is wrong. Jesus didn't condemn him. Jesus just spent time in his house. And the very presence of Jesus changed Zacchaeus. The very presence of Jesus began to make a change where, where whatever Zacchaeus was in the past, he wanted to be new. When, when, he told Zac, when Zacchaeus told Jesus this, Zac, Jesus said this, today salvation has come to your house. And then he says something else. The son of man came to seek and to save. The Bible says that Jesus went about to destroy all the works of the devil. Jesus doesn't come to good people's houses. Jesus comes to bad people's houses and makes them good. It's the saving power of Jesus Christ. It's never been about our works. It's never been about our power. But it's the, it's the purity and the holiness and the righteousness of the blood of Jesus that was offered up at the cross of Calvary for your sins and for mine. Only Jesus can save our life. Only Jesus can change a person's life. And it doesn't just save you for when you die. 
It doesn't just save you when you're, it's your time to go to heaven. But Jesus begins to go into your past and he makes all things new. He removes the guilt and the shame of yesterday. He restores your soul. So many people are under the weight of guilt and shame. They've done things that are terrible in the eyes of man and in the eyes of themselves. They, 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 they can look at Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus is the Son of God. I know he's holy. I know he's righteous. But I'm not, and I feel the shame of my past. I know I failed God. I know I'm unworthy. But Jesus gives all of us an opportunity to come to him and to lay down our life so that we can accept his. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The simple act of belief. I believe in Jesus and the moment I believe in Jesus, everything is made new. What I could not do, he does in me. I couldn't cleanse my life, but he cleanses me. I couldn't change my life, but he does. My mom couldn't change me, but he did. And I've been, I've been, I'm made new. I'm born again. I'm, I, I enter into a new life. Not a better old life, but a new life. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Look at yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. So there's no more chains of the past. There's no more brokenness of yesterday. There's no more bondage of sin and guilt and shame. All of it is done away with at the cross of Calvary. When he died, my sins died. When he died, my guilt and shame died. When he died, my, my, my past was, was, was broken and destroyed forever. Man might remember your past. Man might accuse you of doing wrong and, and say, you're that sinner, you're that person, you're that tax collector, you're that notorious sinner. But Jesus, he shows up to your house and he stays. He changes everything. He makes all things new. Your salvation was never about your works. Your salvation has never been about how good you are. Your salvation is based upon the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to go the, to the cross and pay for your sins of my sins to give us a new life. And it's just not, it's not, a, any, it's not a, a normal life. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't even really know how to describe the life that Jesus has for us. So the Bible says, you know, we are a peculiar people. In other words, there's something different, something strange, something not ordinary about the people of God. We've been made new in Christ Jesus. We are a holy nation. We are the children of God. We are a peculiar people. We are people that have been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus, that have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. That every day we wake up every morning, we say, Lord, what do you desire for us to do? And he leads us and he guides us and he directs us. If you've never found yourself doing something because the Holy Ghost told you to do it, you need to start listening to him more. If people don't look at you strange at least once a day because you are saying something <laughs> that they weren't expecting you to say, but it was real, it was life, and it was of God, you're doing it wrong. Because every day we walk and we talk, and in him we move and have our being. In him, he, he leads us by his spirit. He, 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 he pulls us, he nudges us, he directs our steps, and wherever he leads us, the Bible says, what Jesus said, wherever my servants are, there I am. So it doesn't matter if you're in Harlingen, Texas, if you're being led by the Holy Ghost to do something in Harlingen, Texas, the Holy Spirit is with you, Jesus is with you. If you might be in your home, you might be in your workplace, you might be in a foreign land, but wherever you are, because you are a servant of the Most High God, a son of God, someone who's bought with the price of the blood of Jesus, Jesus is with you. 
And if God is for you, who could be against you? You're not by yourself. The greater one is living on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost is empowering you to do things. He's taking you to a life of abundance. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you want the devil to destroy your life, to kill your life, then just stay the same. But if you want what Jesus says, I have come to give you life. Life more abundantly. If you want a, an abundant life, come to Jesus today. Come. It's, it's the most incredible thing. I, 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 don't, I don't understand how to articulate it, but as a pastor, many, many Sundays and many times when we come to this altar and we have an altar call and we invite people to come and to give their life to Jesus, I see people and when you hear about their past, some of them have lived a past where they were involved in, in all sorts of bondages, you know, criminals, addictions, uh, brokenness, you name it, and have lived their life. I know men, and there are people here in this room right now that live their life in and out of, of violence, in and out of, of, of criminal activity. What their mother couldn't change, the, the, the court systems couldn't change, you know, the, the losses of the past couldn't change them. But one moment with Jesus, one moment of Jesus. I've seen men 40, 50, 60 years old that the world could not change them. They're hard and broken men. But when they come into the presence of God in a service like this, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and they come to this altar and lay down their life for Jesus. What their mother couldn't do, Jesus does in one moment. Salvation comes from the Lord. That's why Jesus came. He came to set the captives free. He came to destroy all the works of the devil. And you could be in a, in, a, in a holy place. You could be in a church. You could be in a religious setting and miss out on the Savior. Palm Sunday all over this world, people are celebrating the triumphant entry of the Lord. The Bible says they took off their, 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 their robes, their cloaks, and they, they, their, and they put them on the, on the ground, and they, they took palm branches and branches, and they laid them on the ground, and it was a symbol of, of honor and respect for Jesus is coming. The triumphant entry of the Lord, and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We sing songs, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. But the meaning behind Hosanna is save us. Save us. That's the meaning of Hosanna. People treat the word Hosanna like if it's I love you, Lord, or, or praise the Lord, or glory to you. But no. Hosanna is, save us! Please! That's the literal translation of Hosanna. And they, 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 they honored him, they received him, and they screamed out to him, they cried out to him. But at the very end, they said, he's a great prophet. They were in the midst they were in the very presence of Jesus and they only saw him as a prophet, not a savior. They, they, were, they wanted a king to rise up with a sword and a spear to, de to defeat their physical armies, to conquer the, the Romans and those that they were physically oppressing them. But the salvation of the Lord is greater than the physical. The salvation of the Lord is to destroy the greatest enemy, the curse of sin and death. And Jesus came to destroy the curse of sin and death, and he did it once and for all at the cross of Calvary. 
But they cried out, Hosanna, save us, please. They honored him. They put down their robes. They honored him with everything that they had, with great celebration. But the same crowd a week later, crucify him. I, want, I don't know about you, but I feel so honored and thankful that I'm saved. I am thankful because there's a lot of people that have heard the gospel and they rejected Jesus because they saw him as a prophet and not a savior. Just your salvation is a miracle. The only with the, your eyes open to the revelation that Jesus is the son of God, that salvation could come. You can see the works of the Lord. You can see the, pro the power of God demonstrated. You can hear the gospel being preached. But unless your eyes are open by the Father to revelation that Jesus is the Son of God and that God loves you. And it's my job as a pastor, as a minister of the gospels to preach this good news. That's what the gospel is, the good news. I want to let you know that Jesus is not dead and buried. He rose from the dead. He overcame sin and death. The Bible says he laid down his life. But three days later, he picked it back up. Amen. Somebody shout, he picked it back up. He laid down his life and he picked it back up. And see, God has a perfect plan, amen? God wanted to make sure that the whole world knew that Jesus was not dead, buried in the grave, but Jesus rose from the dead. So he raised up evangelists to tell everyone that Jesus is alive. Listen, if you want everyone to know, you don't tell a man to tell, to tell him. You tell a woman. The women were the ones that went to the grave and they saw that it was empty and they began to tell everyone that Jesus is alive. I mean, I can't help it that women talk too much. I mean, just can't keep them quiet. They just. <laughs> Save us, please. And that cry has not changed. That cry has not changed. Today, there are people all over the city that are crying out for a savior. People that are looking for Jesus. People are looking for some sort of deliverance from their, from their life. I want to tell you, Jesus didn't come to make your life better. He came to get rid of your life and give you a new one. This amazing revelation. We are born twice, but we only die once. <laughs> We're born twice, but we only die once. I want to let you know, I, I died a long time ago. Amen. When I gave my life to Jesus and I heard the call of God upon my life, I died. I'm no longer living for myself. I live for the Lord. Every day I walk by faith and none by sight. The life I live is unto him by faith. Amen. And I've seen the glory of God. I've seen God heal. I've seen God restore. I've seen God set the captives free. I've seen God save all over this world. I've seen miracle upon miracle about the goodness of God. I don't need to be convinced that Jesus is Lord. I know that he's Lord. I'm totally convinced you can't get that out of me. I'm saved. The argument is over. Forever and ever. My name is written in heaven, in the Lamb's book of life. I don't care what devil shows up. The greater one is inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We cast out devils. We break the chains of bondages off of people's lives. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil's afraid of me. Because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Say, I have the victory. Again, I have the victory. You have to understand, victory was one moment, and now it's your forever. Jesus paid the price for your victory. And that's the good news. That's the good news. I'm not on my way to hell. I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. 
There is a story in the word of God. Let's go and go there. Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, Acts chapter 16. And it talks about Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were preaching the gospel and they faced persecution. They were arrested, they were beaten, and they were bound with chains in, in the, the deepest part of the prison, a dungeon. And you think, well, man, now that I'm saved, everything's going to be good. You're going to go through some stuff. Let me just say this. If you came looking for a word that being saved, that you don't have to suffer, that is unscriptural. But we suffer with Christ. And the Bible says if we suffer with Christ, we will be glorified with him as well. Say this, as long as Jesus is with me, everything's going to be all right. And so these two men were, were suffering because they were, they were beaten. But just because their physical situation didn't look good didn't mean that they lost their praise or their worship. And so at the midnight hour, they begin to praise the Lord. They begin to sing songs unto God. Amen. And the Bible says that the chains and the, and the prison and, and everything just began to shake. And the chains fell off of their, off of their hands and their feet. And, and because of the anointing, because of the, of the power of God shaking those chains, they were set free. They were completely free. Amen? Are you with me? In Acts chapter 16, verse 25. But at the midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. They were not the only ones that were free. All the prisoners were set free because of the praise of these men. And the keeper of the prison... Awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house and he took them that same hour, the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The promise is you and your family will be saved. You and your family will be saved. But pastor, you don't know my, you don't know my brother. The, the promise is you and your household will be saved. You don't know my aunt. The promise is you and your household will be saved. But you don't know my, 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 my cousin. You don't know how terrible this is life. The promise is you and your household will be saved. They're coming to Jesus. They're going to get saved. You might say, well, that's a miracle. You being saved was a miracle in itself. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your family will be saved. That is a promise for this real Grande Valley. That is a promise for your household, your family, your lineage. You and your household shall be saved. But pastor, my child ran away from God. My son doesn't want to serve the Lord. That does not change the promise of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household shall be saved.
They might not know it, but they're marked for salvation. They'll walk into a place, and next thing you know, a person there being led by the Holy Ghost finds himself talking to them about Jesus. Every one of you, when you, th when you think about your, your, your story of salvation, how incredible it is that you are saved. Literally, God had to move heaven and hell just to save you. He had to send people into dark places just to tell you about the love of God. But he did it. He's faithful. There are many people that they're already condemning their loved ones. You don't understand my, my son, he, he rejected everything. He's living like hell. He's, he's involved in all this and all that. Did it change the word of God? No. So they're going to get saved. Say, my family's going to get saved. They, they, they just don't know it yet. They're going to get saved. This Palm Sunday, I know we, we, did everybody get one of these palm branches? Might not be as nice as mine, but. <laughs> let, let me see your palmas, palmas, palmas. I felt led by the Lord to pray for salvation for your family. And I want you to see these branches. And I want you to take some in your hand representing your family members that you know that need to get saved. You might have two people in your family that you know that are not saved, but they need Jesus. Just go and take two of those, those branches and keep them in your hand. Because I'm going to pray for you. And I believe we're going to have so many souls saved this week that God is going to speak to them even in the middle of the night. Do you know that there's a great revival taking place all over the Middle East with no preachers? Many of them are having visions of Jesus, and Jesus is revealing himself to them, and they're giving their life to the Lord. Some of you have been praying for your loved ones for a long time, and, and you've, you're at a place where I don't even know if if they will ever give their life to Jesus, I've, I've encouraged them, I've spoken to them, I've been, I've been praying for them. But I believe that God's gonna break through for you. Yeah. This week, this week is a week of salvation. If you have four, fam four family members that need salvation, hold four of these palms. One, however many. Hallelujah. This is just an act of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I want you to stand up on your feet if you can. There's two things I want to pray for you today. Number one, I want to pray for their salvation. And number two, I want to pray that God will give you boldness to preach the gospel to them. I was spending time with a pastor, and, and he was talking about soul winning. They had asked him to, to, lead, to teach a class on soul winning. And he began to describe his class on soul winning to me. And he says, well, I, you know, I, I'm probably going to need a, about a week just to teach these people how to win souls. And I, I looked at him and said, no, 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 no. Soul winning is one thing only is needed. Boldness. That's it. Boldness to lead people to Christ. Do you know that the lost want to be found more than you want to, find, you want to bring them to Christ? And I believe that God wants to put is going to put a spirit of boldness upon you that, that staying quiet is no, no longer an option. But you're going to want to tell them about Jesus. And as you tell them about Jesus, the Holy Ghost will be there. Amen.
I had a friend of mine talk about, he said, he said, Pastor, I felt led to tell this, this person about Jesus. And as I began to tell that person about Jesus, I got all these goosebumps on me. And the other person had goosebumps as well. Because the Holy Ghost will help you. Amen. People will be healed. People will be set free. The power of God will be there. But God's looking for people that will be bold. There are many people this week that are going to try to commit suicide. There are many people that are going to try to lose themselves in some sort of drug or some sort of bottle or some sort of negative relationship. And it's not because those things are the what is, what's enticing them. It's because they're trying to lose themselves somehow. They need Jesus. They want to get saved. They just don't know. The Bible says, how will they know without a preacher? You're the preacher. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the preacher. Look at me, I'm Pastor Kevin. Oh. <laughs> you're the preacher. You're not going to be like me, but you're going to be like Jesus. You know, when you have boldness because you have love, you don't want them to go to hell. You want them to know Jesus. You want your family to be saved. Maybe the Lord will use this week of taking communion where you tell your, lo uh, your, your, your loved one, hey, take communion with me. This is Holy Week. Let's recognize Jesus. And at that table of the Lord, they'll give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your family. You and your household shall be saved. Close your eyes for a moment. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to live for you and to know you. And Father, I pray for those that do not know you. That they're checking their hearts right now and they want to be saved. They want to be born again. They want to know that their sins have been forgiven. Just like Zacchaeus, they're meeting Jesus for the first time, and they want to live right before you, God. So I pray for all those that are coming to you right now. As an act of faith, Lord, that they will pray the prayer of salvation together with me and they'll surrender their life to Jesus. With all eyes closed, if you've never given your heart to Jesus and this morning you're ready to surrender your life to God, God loves you so much. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He came to give you life and life in abundance. But it first takes you surrendering your life to the, him, giving him your life, giving him your past, and giving him your future. He will cleanse you. He will fill you with his spirit and he will change your, your life. If you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, on the count of three, I want you to lift up your right hand. Or maybe you have given your heart to God, but you want to rededicate your life to Jesus today. This prayer is for you as well. If you want to give your life or rededicate your life to Jesus, on the count of three, lift up your right hand and we'll pray together. One, two, three. Lift it up wherever you're at. God bless you. 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 Many people, God bless you. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord has seen every hand. And so we're going to pray as a family. If everyone can, just lift up your hands to heaven. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I want to live for you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Use me for your glory. I believe that you are the Son of God, and I am a child of God. I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus. I am saved. Amen. Amen.
as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone that said that prayer by faith, I want to let you know that all your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Never to be remembered ever again. They have been, they've been blotted out. They have been removed. No more guilt, no more shame. That old man is done away with. The new has come. You are now born again by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit's living on the inside of you. Hallelujah. The Bible says now for all those that have given their life to Jesus, that every spiritual blessing is now yours. There's not a single blessing that God is keeping back from you. But you have now been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And if you ever just fall or stumble, don't run away from God. Run back to Him. He's raising you up. The Bible says if you'll confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. How many thank God that God has not given up on you? He's cleansing you. He's changing you. He's shaping. He's molding you. Say, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you this little teaching before we pray. Freely you receive, freely. Freely you receive, freely. Freely you receive. Whatever you have received, you can give. If you've received salvation, now you could bring salvation. Amen. I, my, my job as a minister is to grab the hand of a person who doesn't know God and the hand of, of God and connect them. The Bible calls it the ministry of reconciliation. That's your job too. Amen. Tell your neighbor you've been hired by the kingdom of heaven. You are officially a preacher. Amen. Welcome to the ministry. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say, Reverend. <laughs> Evangelist. Man of God, woman of God. Hallelujah. How many of you are holding these palm branches and each one has a name on it? We're calling them into the kingdom. The curse of the devil is going to be broken off of their life. The past is over. We're calling them into salvation. I see, I see wives calling their husbands to Jesus. Mothers calling their children to Jesus. Just look at the, the palms that are in your hand. And I want, I want you to begin just to believe and see them saved. See them hearing the gospel. See them receiving the Lord. See them praying and crying out to God. Father, I pray for your people. Father, the Bible, your word says that what good is it to win the whole world but to lose our own soul? Lord, you know we love our family, we love our home, we love our, our, we love our children. And Father, we want them to be saved. We want them to know you as Lord and Savior as we know. And so Lord, as an act of faith right now, your word says that we in our household shall be saved. We grab a hold of that word and we make it ours. We call our family into salvation. Father, I pray that the stony heart will be removed, Lord. That our loved ones will be receptive to the gospel. That even this week they will come to know you as Lord and Savior. We call our children saved. We call our family members saved in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you for evangelists to come and to preach your word to them. But more importantly, Lord, we ask you for boldness that we will preach to them and tell them about how good you are. Holy Spirit, come and confirm your word with signs and wonders. If, Father God, heal them, save them, change their life. 
we cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save our families, Lord. Save our city, Lord. Save us, please. We receive right now by faith, by faith that it is done in Jesus' name, that our household is saved in Jesus' name. Our children are saved. Our loved ones that know you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you've given us boldness to tell them about how good you are. In Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands to heaven if you can and just begin to thank the Lord in your own words. Just thank him, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. You are worthy of all the praise, the glory, the honor. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. Give God the loudest praise. Just praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. He's so good. Amen. Amen. Say some things with, by faith with me. Say this. My loved ones are coming to church with me. They're going to come and praise the Lord. They're going to get saved and give God glory in Jesus' name. This week is a week of salvation. Come on, say that with boldness. This week is a week of salvation. This week is a week a salvation for my house and my family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, don't get angry if your loved ones are more on fire for God than you. Don't be angry if they're buying a bigger Bible than you. If they're praising louder than you. If they're more hungry for Jesus than you. Amen. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Don't get jealous. Amen. One last thing. Do not quench the fire because they're going to be so in love for Jesus. Encourage them. Encourage them. And I pray that their love for Jesus makes you jealous so that you will want more of God too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Oh, Friday. Friday's Good Friday. We're going to have service. Is this 7 p.m.? 
7 p.m. Good Friday service. Uh, love to have you. It's going to be a blessing. Amen. And then, of course, we have our resurrection service. We don't have Easter services around here. I don't know what Easter is. We have resurrection service. Amen. We have raised the dead services here. Amen. Resurrection. You know, there was this one man, this, this one little boy who heard at church, he said that the Bible says that we will raise the dead. And he heard that. So he went out in the streets and he began to look for a funeral because he wanted to raise the dead. Little boy, just riding his bicycle. And there was a, a, a funeral going down the street. They were, they were marching, they were walking to the, the graveyard and a little girl had died. The family was going to bury that little girl this little boy stood right in the front, right in the center of the road and stopped the funeral. He looked at the parents and he said, my Jesus raises the dead. Can I pray for your daughter? And they agreed. So this little boy prayed for that girl and she came back to life again, amen. I mean, no, Jesus raises the dead, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love you all. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I, I want to, uh, you know, I wish I was a visiting minister. That way I could just be here longer. Tonight, what time is my, 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 my class? Do you remember? Is it at six? Six to seven. Our Bible school, I'm beginning healing class at 6 p.m. And so if you need healing, I want you to come at 7 to 8. It's at 7 o'clock. Come to sit in healing class because we're raising up ministers to heal the sick. And you guys are the ones we're going to be experimenting our faith upon. Amen. So we're going to have a lot of healing. Amen. If you need healing in any area, come at 7 o'clock. Are we going to be in the back? In the coffee house, amen. Praise the Lord, even better, amen. At seven o'clock, amen. Lift up your hands one more time. Father, thank you. Thank you for filling this house, Father God. Thank you for overflow, and I pray overflow with every person in my life, in, in, this, in this place in their life, Father God. I pray for your abundance, your goodness. I pray for your joy, your peace. Let this week be one of the greatest weeks. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a wonderful service. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. If anyone needs prayer, I'll be here at the altar. God bless you guys. Thank you all for coming to church.